of the aircraft that's been grabbing a lot of attention here at Sun and Fun is this guy standing up on its really unusual landing gear. I'm Dan Johnson talking to Jan Eggenfelder, and he's going to have to tell me what the story is with this unusual looking airplane. Now, before you do that, I want to say this is not a whole new airplane. It was on some other gear before, but you said I can do even better. Tell me the story. Well, uh, it, it's a it's a Zenith Super Duty, you know, the airplane, and uh, we we basically want to keep it that. Uh, we don't want this to become some kind of a non Super Duty. But we looked at other people competing, which we like to do for fun in school competitions, and we saw that everybody's using an aftermarket landing gear. Like they have a, a traditional cub or whatever they're flying, but the landing gear is usually different. Different manufacturers sell different landing gear. So we said, well, we're going to demonstrate that a Xena can do what other airplanes might be able to do as far as short takeoff and landing, and uh, we're going to change just the landing gear. Now, let me interrupt you just for a second. Almost all stole airplanes yeah. are tail -turned. That's true. Because it's, it looks like it's starting to take off right while it's just sitting on its gear. That's true. So they're making use of that. You were a nose wheel airplane. And nose wheel airplanes don't usually compete in stall competitions because, and that's what this is all about. Yeah, we, we like to be able to configure the gear in a way where we, when we land hard and we put the brakes on, we're not putting all that weight on the nose wheel. Okay. And so we had a limitation on, you know, in our last competition where a couple of limitations. One was we couldn't lower the tail enough. We had enough thrust, but we couldn't lower the tail enough to really get going quickly. Even though we beat everybody we, as far as the takeoff, uh, even people in, in a category below us as far as weight, our own category, uh, heavier airplanes, all different kind of engines, nitrous, IO 360s, we beat them all. Um, but we had the limit. We had some limitations. We looked at our pictures and videos, kind of like you always do. You know, if you're a little competitor, right? We got to analyze this. You know, sure. see what's what's keeping us from taking off even faster. And one of the big things was the the tail would hit the ground. Yeah, you you yeah. you try and make like a tail dragger. Right. And you hit the tail and drag. And, and what happens is the wing it can't get to enough angle of attack soon enough. Now, of course, we're not a rocket ship, so. Most airplanes can't take off like that, but we had a little more thrust. We knew we had a little more thrust, so at least we could increase the angle somewhat. Now, that's only part of the story. The other thing is, we've got 18 inches of suspension travel. So, yeah, and what happens when, when, when we compress all of that? At the point where the shocks are fully compressed, the nose wheel is touching, the mains are touching, and the tail is touching. So that means the airplane is now coming down and it's hitting like this on the mains, but and then it compresses. Now the whole airplane is low to the ground in this attitude with the nose wheel already on the ground when we apply the brakes. So we have a lot of, of airplane planted on the ground to get the brakes on and no tendency or, or less tendency of nosing over because we can prevent the shocks from rebounding. We can, ah, we can okay, keep yeah, rebound is also can, a problem. We can keep it down there while we add brakes and then slowly raise the airplane back on. So some of this has been tested and some of this is in tested. <laughs> yeah, this is a, this is a, I've never seen this before, so to me, this is a brand new thing. Uh, but, and we also want to, we want a trailing link suspension. You know, the Cubs, every airplane and every landing gear design is a compromise. We all know that. I mean, we compromise here, we compromise here. And then we come up with the best compromise. And I looked at the Cub style gear. It's lightweight, it's simple, and it had a bungee, and some companies are now putting on shocks, aftermarket shocks. But they all have the tendency yeah. where they have to scrub outboard yeah, yeah, yeah. in order to go up. And the same when you land on pavement, yeah, they, they have, have to the scrub. tires are actually tilted. Well, also they have to go out to go up. Right. And of course, with a trailing link here, uh, if this is a nose of the airplane, it just it follows the, the it follows the airplane. It's very easy for the suspension to go up without having to scrub in or out. I see. And that plus that the all the gear also moves aft. The shocks actually point this way when the wheels ah, do they? Yeah. And, and that's the reason for these hind joints up here. Yeah. And what oh, happens okay. is, you know, as the nose comes up, if you had a pivot point, 
the airplane becomes longer in the back. Yeah, yeah. And so you want to move the wheel back so you don't fall on the butt. So a lot of little things like that. We added a, a bar for the nose wheel. Uh, we did that because the nose wheel is longer. Uh, so, you know, we're just kind of playing around. And, and now we're going into a... The reason we're not participating this year here is because we want to do a lot of testing and also uh, get proficient to use this land. Yeah, sure, make the yeah. most of what you've got. Right, right. So I'm going to point out something else here for the camera. Then. This has got one huge prop on it. It's a 95-inch propeller. 95 inches. Yeah. That's a great big propeller. And if you come in and land, I'm envisioning this in my mind, you come in and land and you slap the nose down hard right. with conventional gear, you're going to impact this problem. Yeah, and then now, of course, we, we're kind of wishing for even a longer propeller because yeah. we still have uh, like 18 inches of, of ground clearance. Yeah. And that's the way the airplane's sitting upright. I mean, yeah. uh, seriously, guys, this is a great big prop on this thing. But, and, and which, you know, you've got a variety of Viking engines, which is right. beyond the main thing to do. The airplane part is just sort of make this look good. Right. So tell me a little bit about the engine on this particular airplane. This one uses a Honda Accord engine, and that's the, the GDI gasoline direct injected 1.5 liter, 195 horsepower engine. 195, okay. Very lucky to get And there are people making it in the north west now, you know, with the high revving Yamaha. This is a, this stall thing is a, an evolving thing. Yeah. You know, you've got 800, we want 900. And, <laughs> so it's all about, you know, trust to get off the ground. Okay. Very similar story to guys that race cars. Uh, same thing. Always get a little more, a little more, a little more somehow. Right. And biking, like you said, we're engine people. We're not going to be traveling around the country and participating in every stall event. We'll do like one a year or two a year. And it's to showcase this, this beautiful Zenit airplane uh, with the landing gear mod and our own engine. So that's, that's what it's about. Good combination. Yeah. So uh, let's talk a little bit more about Viking engines. You've been, you're, you're like huge with uh, Zenith. I mean, they'll, they use yeah. a lot of your engines, but yeah. I see them increasingly. I mean, Viking, you know, 10 years ago when we first talked about this, I didn't see many then. And now I see them frequently. Right, but so, I think I think uh, what you said first about us focusing on a brand like Zenit. Yeah. Like I love watching uh, you guys. As, uh, you do like a table every year or so. How many light sport uh, uh, kit made? Uh, what brand of light sport has been registered the most? And I think Zenit was like the number one three four years in a row. Oh uh, yeah, every year. since we, we shifted to a new system, but I think it's four years now and every year. Uh, okay. the number one seller. Not just the white sports, but of sport pilot eligible kits, which is really what they mostly sell. So. Yeah, so then we still have people up until the day that come and like point out, like, you know, did you wheel this airplane in here? They don't know about us. But Zenit being number one, and we supplying more engines to Zenit builders than anyone else, yeah. that makes us fairly popular. Yeah, <laughs> so, well, it's, uh, so you've we done do. very well there, but powered parachutes. Uh, the Aventura has one. I can't, I'm not going to try to name all the airplanes right. that have your engine. But the new one is the S21. Quite well with the S21 with Rams. We, we, yeah. we just had a first flight. Oh, ah, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, Rams is using it too then. So that's a lot of different yeah. people that are doing it. Okay, so a lot of great information about the monster stole here. We'll look forward to seeing you in a competition uh, well, sometime, maybe uh, later this year. Uh, all right, that'd be fine. Be ready, to let, be ready oh, yeah. by the end oh, of the year. Oh, yeah, no, no, no. I, we're going to practice and be ready. And, uh, when, whenever the next one is, we'll be there. All right, sounds yeah. good. So. Uh, tell us how we find out more stuff, mainly about the engine, of course. Of course you yeah, think, the, uh, the easiest, because people have a lot of questions, call at least at our, our, you know, 386-566-2616. Okay, uh, and the website address? is Viking Aircraft Engines, and then, of course, YouTube is huge for us. We have a lot of YouTube. Okay, you got a Viking Engine. We do. Okay, very yeah. good. You can find more about what Jan has been doing, as well as what Zenith has been doing, and lots of other affordable aviation on bydanjohnson.com. Thanks for talking to Jan Eggenfiller and myself here at Sun and Yes, thank you.